Every year we do a video on a scorecard. How did we do last year? And with 17 topics from 2016, uh, that'll just take too long. Instead, I thought we'd focus on one topic, the one that, at least in my experience, I get asked about in December of 2016 more than any other one. What about you, Paul? What's the one you get asked the most about? The topic that has come up most in conversations around the world has been virtual reality. It is fascinating for many players, technology players and media players and telecoms players. It has been a really riveting topic. I remember when we launched in January, we were saying that uh, all hardware and software content combined would be about a billion, and there were competitors out there saying it would be three, four, five billion dollars in the first year. How'd we do? We're getting close to that. So as we're recording, it's still the end of 2016, but we are moving more and more towards the $1 billion mark and the two and a half million unit mark. So we were, we were really accurate compared to the rest. Um, what have we learned since, since January and the launch? Uh, I have some thoughts I'd like to share, but what about you? What sort of has jumped out at you from the conversations you've had maybe in the last few months? Yeah. So one of the things which is really fascinating is what does it mean for the content creators? And they're essential to this. It can't just be about building a great piece of technology in which to hold the content. One thing I learned was when it comes to editing, editing is often a joint process. With VR, you require one station per person and generally it's very difficult to edit simultaneously so you don't get the collective feedback and that cramps the ability to do a great edit it's a different process for producers of filmed content. I've heard the same thing. One of the other ones was from gaming. Uh, we predicted that gaming would be a big part of VR, and it has been. But I've heard some surprise from, from serious gamers. Uh, one guy I was talking to uh, has a VR headset, loves the VR headset, but he said, I play hundreds of hours of games per month, yet I use my VR headset only one or two hours. It's fun, it's intense, it's exciting, but I'm not using it nearly as much as I thought I would. What's also been really useful in the countries that I've seen is uh, just looking at holiday promotions, Black Friday. That's only a great way of finding out, so what is it the retailers, the vendors are betting on? And I've seen very few VR promotions. How about you? Uh, almost none, but let's look almost forward. What do you think? I mean, okay, so that's this year. What about 2017, 18, 19, 20? Where does VR go based on what you've learned since we launched? So one of the options is as you get declining prices, uh, you may get uh, a greater uptake. So one of the limitations right now of high-end VR is it's so expensive per user. It's thousands of dollars to have um, a really high-end experience. So if that becomes hundreds, you get uh, a greater addressable market. But do you think deflation is going to unlock the market? Or is there something more fundamental in terms of, is this what people, mainstream people, want to do? Is it part of our behavioral set? When I look at VR, as it gets cheaper and lighter and more content, I can see it going from a hardcore 1% to maybe 10% of people using it. But when I think, can it cross to 90 or 100%, I have a real problem. Even if these headsets get cheap, get light, and you don't need special tethers and, and, and computers to support them, I think it's the antisocial aspect that's the biggest problem. I've talked to, gosh, hundreds of people, thousands of people in some, some conferences, and when we look at the idea of sitting in our living rooms for hours at a time and having a thing on our heads that blocks the views of our wives and husbands, parents, kids, cats, dogs, and our smartphones, I just got 90% of people telling me, not, not, not that I'm not interested, I will never wear this for as long as I live. And that, that determination has really come through loud and clear. Yeah, I think one thing that VR has taught us or reinforced is the importance of fundamental human behavior. We enjoy the company of others. Being with 80,000 other people makes watching somebody throw a hammer into grass or running into a sand pit interesting. Um, without that human reaction, it would just feel a little bit sterile or isolated.